Like I said in my last video about Haile Selassie Gugsa, there is no shortage of betrayal stories, especially in Ethiopia. And I know I said Haile Selassie Gugsa had the most infamous betrayal in African history, but the man in this video had plans far more sinister. And it's even worse because unlike Haile Selassie Gugsa, who was merely a governor, this man was a Ross, meaning he was a trusted and powerful member of nobility, making it sting that much more. This is the story of Hailu Tekle Hemenet, the man who almost took control of an empire. Born in 1868, Hailu Tekle Hemenet was an army commander and a member of the nobility of the Ethiopian Empire. He represented a provincial ruling elite who were often at odds with the Ethiopian central government. Hailu Tekle Hemenet was an independent-minded person who throughout his life was mistrustful of and mistrusted by the emperor. Hailu Tekle Hemenet was the son of Negus Tekle Hemenet Tesema of Gojum province. Essentially being a kingdom within a kingdom, Gojum had long been a vassal kingdom within the Ethiopian Empire. The title King of Gojum was merely an honorific title. On January 10th, 1901, at the death of King Tekle Hemenet Tesema, all three of his sons, Betsabe, Balo, and Hailu, fought over who would succeed him as ruler of his province. However, instead of any of them succeeding him, Emperor Menelik II split the province into three parts and appointed his own governors over each part. Menelik thus effectively removed the sons of Tekle Hemenet Tesema from power in Gojum. Around 1906, Menelik became incapacitated and Empress Tetu Betel became the de facto power behind the throne. In 1907, Hailu Tekle Hemenet successfully used the influence of Tetu Betol to be appointed Shum of Gojum. In 1913, Emperor Menelik died and his grandson Lijiasu should have succeeded him. However, the leading nobles of Ethiopia did not feel Iasu was ready. Eventually, in 1916, after a delayed coronation, Iasu was deposed and replaced by his aunt and Menelik's daughter, Princess Zuditu. Zuditu was proclaimed the female ruler of the country and her cousin, Ras Tafari Makonin, was named crown prince. After his being deposed, Iyasu and a small band of followers roamed the Afar Depression for five years. On January 11, 1921, he was captured and taken into custody by Ras Guksa Arya Selassie of Eastern Tigray province. This was due to the fact that he had allegedly converted to Islam which was illegal for someone a part of the nobility to do. Guksa Arya Selassie then handed Iyasu over to Ras Kasa Haile Darge of Shua province, where he was placed in house arrest with the empress ensuring he was at least comfortable. In his book, Ethiopia, Power and Protest, Peasant Revolts in the 20th Century, Gebru Tariq described Sham Haile Tekle Hemenet of Gojum as having an avaricious taste for power and wealth. Tariq goes on to describe how Ras Hailu introduced new forms of taxation, auctioned political and church offices, nearly monopolized provincial trade by controlling the export side of it, transacted obligatory labor into monetary rents, and enlarged his estates with an arrogant disregard for the customary judicial process of land allocation. These actions earned him the nickname Baru Hailu. In the spring of 1924, Ras Hailu Tekle Hemenet accompanied Ras Tafari Makonin on his European tour. Along with Ras Hailu and Ras Tafari Makonin on the tour were Ras Seyum Mengesha of Western Tigray, Ras Malageta Yegazu of Ilubabur province, Ras Makonin Endelkachu, and Blatengeta Herui Welde Selassie. Hailu Tekle Hemenet, Seyum Mengesha, and Tafari Makonin were sons of men who fought at the Battle of Ottawa. Mulageta Yegezu actually fought in the battle as a young man. Rastafari and his party visited Jerusalem, Cairo, Alexandria, Brussels, Amsterdam, Stockholm, London, Geneva, and Athens. They took six lions with them, which were presented to a French zoo 
and to dignitaries in the United Kingdom and France. One funny story involving Hylutek Lehmanet happened at Buckingham Palace when the Crown Prince Ross Tafari Makonnen and his entourage were being received by King George V and Queen Mary. Ross Hylutek Lehmanet, along with the other princes and nobles, was introduced to the British King. In meeting Ross Hylu, King George asked if His Highness could speak English. The interpreter said no. The king then asked if he could speak French or German. Again, the answer was no. King George became irritated and told the interpreter to tell His Highness that he was an ignorant man. Ross Hailu Tekla Hemenet listened quietly and then asked the interpreter if His Majesty could speak Amharic. When he was told no, Hailu Tekla Hemenet asked him if His Majesty could speak Tigrinya or Goraginya, and again, the answer was no. Hailu Tekla Hemenet then smugly told the interpreter to tell the king that His Majesty was equally ignorant. King George burst out laughing and soon after took a great liking to Ras Hailu Tekla Hemenet. Four years after this story takes place, on October 27, 1928, Tafari Makonnen was proclaimed king by Empress Zuditu. Soon after this, sometime in 1929, Ras Hailu was approached by Ras Guksa Well who, like himself, was often at odds with the Ethiopian central government. He was Zuditu's husband who was separated from her during the time she was elevated to empress. Guksa Well asked Hailu to support his uprising against the recently crowned Negus Tafari Makonnen. After initially indicating his interest in supporting Guksa Well, Hailu decided against joining him. On March 31, 1930, the uprising ended at the Battle of Ancham, when Guksa Well was killed in action. Empress Zuditu died a few days later of natural causes, and on November 2nd, 1930, Tafari Makonnen was proclaimed Emperor Haile Selassie I. With the accession of Haile Selassie, Hailu's greed led to his own downfall. According to Harold Marcus, while the other great lords of Ethiopia like Ras Seyum Mengesha and Ras Kasa Haile Darge had surrendered their rights to custom duties and tax revenues in their provinces, Hailu tightly held on to his revenues. Marcus continues that Hailu also embarrassed the crown by openly seeking favors from the American and British legations, insinuating that otherwise he would block their access to Lake Tana and the Blue Nile. Compelled to appear at Hailu Selassie's coronation or risk insulting him, Hailu came to the capital where he and his son were detained while charges were made against him. Ras Hailu managed to extract himself from the capital after a time, only to find his government in Gojum in shambles. On April 14, 1932, Hailu was summoned once again to Addis Ababa to face new charges. Hailu was fined heavily, had half of his property taken away, and placed under house arrest. In May 1932, Ras Hailu Tekla Hemena involved himself in a plot to free his son-in-law the deposed Lij Iyasu. Iyasu had been under house arrest and in the custody of Ras Kasa Haile Darge since 1921. After freeing Iyasu, Hailu planned to recapture him and to turn him back to gain favor with Haile Selassie. Lij Iyasu did end up escaping and his plan almost worked. However, the role he played in Iyasu's escape became known and Hailu was taken into custody himself and deposed. A tribunal found Hailu guilty of mendacity, corruption, tax evasion, and treason, so his punishment went from a comfortable house arrest to imprisonment. He was replaced as Shum of Gojum by Ras Imru Haile Selassie, a loyal cousin of the emperor. On May 2nd, 1936, at the very end of the Second Italo-Ethiopian War, Haile Tekle was still considered enough of a threat that on his way into exile, Haile Selassie had him removed from prison bound and loaded onto his train leaving Addis Ababa. Haile Selassie must have reconsidered because Haile Tekluhemenet was released at Dair Dawa with fellow prisoner Ras Balcha Safo. But while Safo went into the hills to fight against Italian occupation, Haile Tekluhemenet decided he had a better idea. So he boarded a train back to Addis Ababa and approached the Italian invaders in submission. However, Unlike Haile Selassie Guksa, Haile Tekle Hemenet had a plan. He 
He planned to go along with the Italians for as long as possible until they gave him the title of king and then once he received that title he would provoke an uprising, driving the Italians out of the country and assuming control of Ethiopia for himself. Hailu Tekla Hamanet's plan is even worse than what Guxa had done because he was attempting to use the Italian invasion to his own benefit by taking advantage of the emperor's absence and capitalizing on it by taking over the entire empire. During the occupation, Hailu was treated with respect and given honors few other Ethiopian nobles received from the Italians. He retained his preoccupation titles of Lul and Ras, and the Italian government awarded him the Star of Italy and restored his lands which had been confiscated from him in 1935. Graziani himself exempted him and his family from the repercussions of Yekatit 12, which led to the deaths or imprisonment of many respectable Ethiopians. The Italians dangled the title of Negus in front of Hailu but never actually granted it to him. This is because the Italian intelligence service was one step ahead of him and knew about his plan the whole time. This led to Italy using him to do despicable things like in July 1936 when a number of surviving Ethiopian soldiers staged an unsuccessful attack on Addis Ababa to take control of the capital from the Italian occupiers. Hailu Tekla Hamnet played a part in the surrender of two of the commanders of the attacking forces. Both commanders were sons of Ras Kasa Haile Darge, Abera Kasa and Asfawosen Kasa. Along with others, both had taken part in the attack and like most, they attempted to escape capture after the attack failed. Hailu assured Abra and Asfawosen that if they surrendered, they would not be harmed. On December 21st, both Abra and Asfawosen turned themselves in at Fitch. However, once in Italian captivity, they were both executed as rebels. The Italians eventually returned Hailu to power in Gojum at the very final stage of their occupation and as their rule began to collapse under the onslaught of British Commonwealth and exiled Ethiopian forces. In 1941, after Emperor Haile Selassie returned to power in Ethiopia, Ras Hailu Teklehemina again switched sides and handed Gojum over to the emperor. However, he first made sure that Italian forces had safely evacuated Gojum. Hailu returned to Addis Ababa with Haile Selassie. He was forbidden from leaving Addis Ababa but was still given all the dignities of a senior prince of the imperial dynasty and remained head of the house of Gojum. After these events, he fell into relative obscurity until his death in 1950.